Smallpox was a deadly killer that plagued mankind from earliest times. There are signs of smallpox scars in Egyptian mummies, and for centuries the disease carried off rich and poor alike, although crowding of the poor in cities led to more outbreaks of this airborne virus. Those who contracted smallpox were very likely to die of it, and if they survived, they were often disfigured by scarring and blindness. In the 18th century, the people of Europe were desperate for a cure. We might be tempted to mock some of their attempts at treatment today. Sleeping with the windows open, keeping your bed sheets at half mast, 12 small beers a day. But remember, this is before the germ theory of disease was established. No one knew what caused smallpox, which made it difficult to figure out how to fight it. Edward Jenner, the man we know as the father of immunology and the pioneer and champion of vaccination, might himself have been lost to us due to an early brush with smallpox. When Jenner was a child of eight, he was treated with the medical gold standard of the day, inoculation, also known as variolation against smallpox. This was no easy treatment. It involved fasting, bleeding, and purging to prepare the patient and then introducing dried pustules, the variola, from a recent smallpox victim into a small wound on the hand. If the young patient developed the pox and lived, he or she would develop an immunity to smallpox. Not everyone survived variolation, but it gave people better odds of survival than taking their chances with spontaneously contracting smallpox. Jenner did survive his bout with variolated smallpox and grew up to be a doctor. He went on to train in London to be a surgeon. Rather than staying in London to join the smart set of society doctors, Jenner returned home to Barclay, Gloucestershire to open a simple country practice. This gave him the opportunity to develop certain hobbies as an amateur naturalist, conducting studies on the cuckoo and collecting fossils. It also brought Jenner into close contact with cows and milkmaids. It was a common country wisdom that milkmaids enjoyed special protection from the scourge of smallpox. Reportedly, Jenner heard one milkmaid boasting that she didn't have to worry about her pretty face getting scarred since she had had cowpox. Cowpox could be transmitted from the infected cow's udders to the milkmaid's hands during milking. And while cowpox looked a lot like smallpox, with crusty pustules, it was a relatively mild disease. Jenner never forgot his early traumatic treatment for smallpox, and he hoped to develop a better procedure. He had the idea of deliberately infecting a young patient with cowpox to test if that conferred protection against the deadly smallpox. If Jenner's hunch was right, there would no longer be the need to take the risks of variolation. Edward Jenner carried out his daring experiment on May 14, 1796. He took a sample of pus from Sarah Nelms, a milkmaid, who had come down with a case of cowpox, and introduced it into a small cut on a young boy named James Phipps. He was a gardener's son, eight years old, the same age Jenner had been when he had experienced the variolation treatment. Phipps did come down with cowpox and recovered quickly. Then Jenner performed the standard introduction of variolar material from smallpox, but Phipps did not develop any signs of disease the boy was now immune to smallpox. Jenner wrote up his findings, but the Royal Society of Medicine was scandalized by the very idea and refused to publish his letter. Jenner self-published, but he was met with great resistance and mockery. Cartoons at the time suggest that people were afraid that the treatment with the material from a cow would cause patients to become cow-like in some way. The name Jenner coined for the procedure, vaccination, comes from the Latin word vaca, meaning cow, and that provided an inescapable connotation for the squeamish public. The well-to-do London doctors were none too thrilled either about giving up their established methods of variolation in favor of the new methods of this country bumpkin. Gradually, especially with the help of influential friends of Jenner's, including Frederick Augustus, the fifth Earl of Berkeley, who introduced Jenner to the king, the practice of vaccination gained favor. Napoleon announced that every citizen in France would be vaccinated. Thomas Jefferson wrote a letter expressing his profuse admiration and thanks. I avail myself of this occasion of rendering you a portion of the tribute of gratitude due to you from the whole human family. Medicine has never before produced any single improvement of such utility. 
Jenner never sought fame or wealth from his discovery. He received from Parliament an honorarium of £10,000 for his work on vaccination and returned home to Gloucestershire to his country practice. He built a small hut in his garden that he called the Temple of Vaccinia, where he vaccinated poor patients for free. He continued this practice right up until his death in 1823. By 1840, variolation was banned, and in 1853, vaccination became compulsory in England. In 1967, the World Health Organization started the mass vaccination program. By 1980, smallpox was declared eradicated. Edward Jenner's work was said to have saved more lives than the work of any other man. <laughs>